Hello viewers, welcome to Ms. Solochi. Today, our topic is vertebrates. This is in continuation with the playlist of five kingdom classification. Under that, the fifth kingdom, Animalia, which includes vertebrates as well as invertebrates. All vertebrates are included under the phylum Chordata. This Chordata includes a wide range of animals under different classes. Now let's see who are these animals. It begins with the fishes, then the frogs, then we have the reptiles, then birds and finally the mammals. So what are their body plans for each of these animals which allows us to put them under a single phylum Chordata. All classes of animals under Chordata will have a notochord internally in their body. They will also possess a dorsal tibular nerve cord. Beyond this, there are many more features which are present in all classes of animals under Chordata like they will have a closed circulatory system, their heart will be on the ventral side of the body, when they possess limbs they will have two pairs of limbs. Vertebrates as you see here each of them have a backbone and this makes an internal skeleton in their body. Now, what are the different classes that we deal under vertebrates? There are five different classes under vertebrates. These classes are class of fishes that is called pisces, followed by the next is amphibians which includes the frogs, salamanders, then next comes the class Reptilia, which includes reptiles ranging from snakes, crocodiles and many more aquatic as well as some terrestrial reptiles. Then we have the apes, which includes the volant birds and finally the most revolutionized one is the mammals, which include you and all other mammals who feed their young ones by their mammary glands. Now let's see like what condition on the surface of the earth allowed all these different classes to prosper and come up with diversification. This is the image of the earth in the early Devonian period, you can see two supercontinents, Euromerica and Gondwana. Both these land masses lying close to each other, while the rest of the surface of Earth with a vast stretch of oceans and aquatic forms. This led to the prosper and diversification of the vertebrates to a large extent. The other conditions which were prevailing was that the temperature in the water was definitely warmer than what it is today. The oxygen content was close to the 21% that prevails today. It started in the early Devonian with a fluctuation between 17 to 19 percent of oxygen while at a later part it even went higher than what it is now. All these conditions were the triggers for the formation of the vertebrates and here this period called the Devonian period is known as the age of fishes. So the first class under 
core data is the class Pisces. You can see beautiful fishes on your screen. Now, let me take you to the different characters that confirm that the animal is a fish. General characteristics of fishes are as follows. Limbs will be modified into fins which will assist them in swimming. They have gills with gill slits which helps them to breathe in water. Then they have a heart which will be two chambered with one auricle and a lower ventricle. Most of their body will be covered with scales which you can see here and these animals are all cold blooded. Not a perfect term to use. In other books you may find either poikilotherms or ectothermals. The best word is ectothermal. What does it mean? That animals whose body temperature fluctuates with the environment. If the outer environment is cold, their body temperature will go low and if the outer environmental temperature is high, their body temperature also tends to become higher. This is what we call as ectothermals. Now, the other names are also here which you can correspond to or cold-blooded but it's not cold always since it fluctuates according to the outer environment. Now, this is an internal organization of the body of a fish. Very clearly, the fins are shown which assist them largely for swimming. A tail fin, also known as caudal fin, and a dorsal fin on the upper side. Then we have the pectoral pelvic fins as well, which are present only in fishes. In cartilaginous fishes, the gills with the gill slits shown here will not be covered in an operculum. So the covering will be absent over the gill slits for all cartilaginous fishes. This is the internal anatomy of a bony fish where you can see most of the structures are labeled like vertebral column, the spinal cord, a swim bladder and the entire digestive system. What I is supposed to be prominently shown is the presence of a bony vertebral column. For all bony fishes, their gills will be covered by an operculum which is shown here that the gills are not exposed and on this right you can see the orders under the bony fishes there are quite a large number of orders where we have little differences to categorize them under different orders here is a comparison between the cartilaginous fishes versus the bony fishes Cartilaginous fishes, otherwise called the chondrichthys, whose skeleton is made up of cartilage, while those of the ostrichthys is mostly made up of bones. The gills is not covered by operculum in case of the cartilaginous fishes. So the gills are exposed to the external environment, whereas in the bony fishes, the gills are covered by a covering called operculum. Next is, for the chondrichthys, they do not possess any swim bladder. They only have their gills for the survival and breathing. But for ostrichthys, they have swim bladder in addition to the gills which is present in them. For the tail lobes, the tail lobes are unequal in size in case of cartilaginous fishes, but in ostrichthys, 
mostly they are equal in size when they are paired lastly about fertilization for chondrichthys or the cartilaginous fishes their fertilization takes place internally but when it comes to the bony fishes they may either have internal fertilization or they may fertilize it outside their body also coming next is class amphibia amphi means of both kind bios means life amphibians can survive in both forms of the surface like they can survive in water as well as on land let me introduce you to some more features of amphibians you can see quite a large number of images of amphibians these amphibians most of them that you see here have two pairs of limbs moreover their skin is always moist which helps them in breathing this may be smooth or rough their heart is little more evolved than those of pisces so instead of two chambered the amphibians have three chambered heart and all the amphibians are ectothermals ecto is corresponding to exterior thermal means pertaining to temperature so the temperature of their body fluctuates with the external environment that is what they are known as the ectothermals this image is the life cycle of a frog the early stages of its life cycle passes in water and they are gill breathers during the tadpole stages but once they evolve and turn into adult forms they breathe by means of lungs which is a feature not corresponding to the pisces in large extent rather it is one way forward to the next class called reptilia this is class reptilia reptiles are creeping or crawling creatures important identifying features for the reptiles are as follows they possess dry skin which is mostly covered with ectodermal scales most of them are adapted to life on land they lay eggs with leathery shells they have tympanum which lies at the bottom of a tubular depression you can see this clearly being shown on this image and the heart is three chambered generally like those of the amphibians but crocodiles have four chambered heart which has evolved from the three chambered ones and all the reptiles are also ectothermal or cold blooded here we have representatives of the class reptilia you can see a wide range of reptiles being shown here like snake tortoise chameleon gecko the common known lizards and the crocodile as well which is a little extra evolutionized compared to the rest of them because of the four chambered heart class the class apes which is the volant birds mostly volant maybe some of the flightless birds are also there so here you can see the beautiful hummingbird which is shown here then the tree sparrow then a turtle dove all these are good examples of the class apes which comprises of birds 
Now, what are the features common to all these birds? Let's see. There are their four limbs are modified into wings. That is, they have wings for flight. And that is indeed a modification of the four limbs. Their exoskeleton is made up of feathers. And since these animals are volant, they have to lead a life of flight. That's why their heart has to be four chambered which can release them with better amount of ATP through thorough oxygenation and these animals are warm blooded or homeothermals. What does it mean? That their body temperature is constant. It doesn't fluctuate with the temperature of the external environment. The birds are also egg layers and their eggs do have calcareous shell. Most birds can fly. This is because they have a very light body and that light body corresponds to the air filled bones called the pneumatic bones. But Flightless birds are not an exception. We have few birds who are flightless like the penguins, like the kiwis, the ostriches who cannot survive a thorough, volant or life of flight. Let's move to the fifth class under vertebrates and this is mammalia or class of mammals. All these mammals have certain features in common. Young puppies are suckling their mother. The class mammalia gets its name from the presence of mammary glands. It is through the mammary glands the mothers secrete milk on which the babies survive. Other features common to mammals are their bodies covered all over with hair. They breathe by lungs. All the mammals have four chambered heart with two upper auricles and two lower ventricles. They also have external ears nose and specialized teeth. All mammals are warm-blooded or endothermals. Mammals mostly give birth to babies which is called a viviparous condition. But indeed there are few exceptions where we have the spiny anteater and the echidna. These are the egg-laying mammals but rest of the features are common with the mammals which I have spoken to you right now. Let's move on to see the evolutionary trend in the formation of the heart starting from the first class under vertebrata to the most evolved mammals. Here you can see in the fishes it just had two chambered heart. Once it came to the next class that is the amphibians represented by frogs they have three chambered heart. The reptiles mostly possess three chambered heart itself but with an exception of the crocodile that evolved higher and showed four chambered heart comes to the next two higher classes of birds and mammals both of them have four chambered heart because of their extra locomotion during their lifetime now let's this is a categorization of the five classes 
in accordance with their ability to maintain their body temperature for the first three classes that evolved the class of pisces amphibians and reptiles none of them can maintain a constant body temperature irrespective of the environment they find their body temperature fluctuating with the external environment itself but when we go higher to the birds and the mammals that is the class apes and the class mammalia all the animals under these two classes maintain a constant body temperature even if the environment outside shows fluctuating temperatures these animals are thus called warm blooded animals or endothermals that is also known by the name homeotherms here is a recap of the important features of the different classes under chordata it will make your learning easier because all the important features have been put together in this image happy learning each of these animals that you came across in the different classes had gone through gradual evolution which is a very long drawn process and there was no straight cut from one class to the successive one in between there has been several organisms who cannot be categorized directly into any one of those classes maybe some of them are still surviving who are called the connecting links others may have become extinct because they could not adapt to the environment who are now called the missing links if you are further interested to know about these connecting and missing links which will give you a much clearer idea as to how the evolution happened you can always leave your comments in the comment box or any other queries that is in your mind you can put them in the comment box as and when i get time i will respond to each of your queries till then thank you for watching please don't forget to like share and subscribe my channel once again i ask you to subscribe to my channel if till now you haven't subscribed to it happy watching and happy learning